So in today's video, we're going to take a look at the EEPROM we learned about in the last video and learn to program it with the Fuburino SD. The Fuburino SD is basically like the Arduino Nano, but with more ports and a micro SD card slot. Now we can program it with the Arduino IDE. Now the Fuburino has 27 digital IO pips. We need to be able to control the 11 address pins, 8 IO pins, and the output enable and write enable lines for the EEPROM. Now that's a total of 21 lines to control, so that means the Fuburino has enough pins. Now let's make a little diagram of how we're going to do this. We have the Fuburino and the way we will use this to program the EEPROM will be that we're going to have the 8 bits which represent the address or byte we want to turn into decimal. This will go to 8 of the 11 address pins on the EEPROM. Then we also need the data itself to go to the IO pins of the EEPROM. This will be the A through G values that need to be programmed into the EEPROM. So although the EEPROM has 8 IO pins, we will only use 7 for now because we only need 7 for a 7 segment display obviously. Okay, so let's take a look at the AC write waveforms to see how we take the address and data and program it into the chip. So first we can see the output enable must be high. Then the address just needs to be set prior to taking the write enable low. Now the chip enable needs to be low, but we have that tied low anyways. So it says that write enable needs to be low. But if we look at the write pulse width, it says that the pulse needs to be between 100 and 1000 nanoseconds, or at a max of 1 microsecond. So this length here has to be between 100 and 1000 nanoseconds. So in all, to write to the EEPROM, output enable needs to be set high. This tells the IO pins to act as inputs. Then we need to have the address and data set. Then we need to have the write enable line low for 100 to 1000 nanoseconds. So let's add output enable and write enable lines to the diagram. Now this looks great, there's just one problem. This won't work. See, let's build a table. Here's the addresses and here is what the output of the EEPROM should be to light up the display. Let's say we have an address of 0. The A to G bit will simply be 6 1s and 1 0. This will make the display make this shape. Now let's say now that you had to translate 8 1s or the number 255 to the displays. So our displays need to show 2, 5, and 5. but that means we need 3 times 7 bits, because each display needs 7 and we need 3 displays with 3 digits, but our EEPROM only has 8 bit outputs. So to solve this, we will have a control bit that tells the EEPROM which digit to output, or in our case, control bits, because since we need 3, we need 2 control bits. So we convert our 8 bit number to an integer, then we have control bits tell the EEPROM to output the first digit of the integer in A to G values, then the second, and then the third. So at max for 8 bits we have 3 digits because the max number is 255. So that means we need 2 bits for control. Alright, take a look at this diagram from the last video. We still have 2 unused EEPROM addresses, so we can put our control bits here. Now ignore the signed and unsigned bit for now. So if we have these 2 bits be 00, zero then the EEPROM will output the A to G values for the first digit, and if it's 0, 01 we could say show the second digit, and if it's 10 we would say show the third digit. So let's add this to our diagram. We have our 2-bit value go into the address, and that tells the EEPROM which digit to output. So now let's go to our table. So now our new 10-bit address system, we have an extra 2 bits for each address. Let's take the example of converting 255. So we have the 8 ones, but then our two control bits are 0, 0. This means we take the first digit of 255 and output it its A to G values, which is a 5. Then if the control bit is 0, 1 for the same 8-bit value, we output the second digit, which is also a 5. Then if the control bit is 1, 0, then we output the A to G value to get a 2 to show up on the 7-segment display. To read from the EEPROM, we have the 8-bit number to convert go into the address lines of the EEPROM, then we have a little counter that will count through 0, 0 to 1, 0 really fast, so that the output of the EEPROM outputs the digits of the number 255 really fast. So let's get started on how we're going to program the Fuburino to make the EEPROM do this. So I just put a bunch of LEDs between pin 0 and pin 7, and the chip gets power automatically uh, from the USB port, so I'll just connect the negative rail to the ground pin on the chip with a 1K resistor so that the LEDs aren't too bright. So what I want to do now is create a program that will simply output a number in binary through these LEDs. So let's load up Arduino here and we'll use pin 0 to pin 7, so we'll just set those pins as outputs with a for loop. Now if you don't have a lot of coding experience, I'm not going to go over what a for loop is and things like that in this video. I've never actually used Arduino before, but I've used other languages, so in case I don't know what I'm doing or if I'm, what I'm doing is totally wrong, please just go ahead and correct me in the comments. But 
Next, I want to create a function or method that takes an integer number and outputs its binary value. So we'll call this method out byte, and it'll take an integer as an argument. Then we'll have a for loop and say write pin i with the value of binary representation of number at the ith digit. So basically, we just convert the number to binary, and then at i equals 0, we get the first digit of that binary number as either high or low. Then we set pin 0 to be whatever that is, either high or low. Then we do the same thing for i equals 1, the second digit, and so on until pin 7 or our eighth digit. So let's try this small program for the number 255, which should output all ones. To upload a sketch to the Fuberino, you need to hold the program button and press the reset button and then let go of the program button. And then we can press upload on the computer. And this is working, which is great. So let's actually just try a different value, like 3. So we can change the code and re-upload it. So you can see that we get the correct representation, however the Fuberino is upside down right now. So we actually want the leftmost bit all the way on the right. So we just have to completely reflect all these values. We can do that in the code by subtracting i, the current pin, from the max pin, which is 7. And this will make the first bit be at 7 minus 0, or the 7th pin. Alright, so now we can output any value we want in binary. Alright, so while we're here, we might as well assign the pins of the Fuburino. So we'll make pin 0 to 7 be the 8-bit number to be converted. Then we'll have pins 8 and 9 be the digit select we talked about earlier. Then pin 10 will be our output enable, pin 11 will be our write enable, and lastly pin 12 through 18 will be the A to G values. Now this outbyte method will become the basis of our entire program, and we can use it to output anything on the chip. We just have to provide it with a different start pin. So if we wanted to set the A to G values, we can use the outbyte method, but instead of outputting a byte that starts at pin 0 and goes to pin 7, we can say output a byte that starts at pin 12 and ends at pin 18, or rather pin 19, but we don't have to pay attention to that last 19th pin. So we can just add that argument to our method. So when we want to set an address, we just want to output a byte that starts at pin 0. And if we want to output data, which is our A to G value, we just want to output a byte that starts at pin 12. So we can create methods for that, set address method and a set data method. And both of these will just work off of the root out byte method we created earlier. So let's test this and do a set address of 3 and a set data of 8. So let's run it. I added some LEDs so we can see all of the outputs, and it doesn't work. We see the set address, but not the set data. And that's because we forgot to designate these pins, the set data pins, as outputs in our Arduino code. Alright, let's do that and re-upload. Now everything is working. Now if we want to write to the EEPROM, we have to make the output enable high, have the address, have the data, then bring the write enable low for less than one microsecond. Now, we can already set an address and data, we just proved that. So let's create a method called writeData that takes the argument of the data and the address. Now remember the data will be the integer representation of the A to G value. So first we'll set the data and set the address, then let's define the pins for the output enable pins and the write enable pins as 10 and 12. So let's first make the output enable high, then let's toggle the write enable line. So let's set it high, then low. To make the line low for enough time though, we'll say one microsecond. Now that is the upper limit, but the minimum time Arduino allows. Then after the delay, we'll bring the line high again. Then in the data sheet, the write cycle time is supposedly one millisecond, but I'll delay this code for 10, just to be sure. So we can test this method by replacing this code with write data 83. Now, if we look at it with the LEDs, we can tell that it works, but of course, that's not as exciting as hooking it up to the EEPROM. So let's get a second breadboard, and we can remove all these LEDs and the resistor. Then we can connect V out to our positive supply rail. So I've connected the first eight address lines of the EEPROM to pin 0 to pin 7 of the Fuberino. Now I'm going to connect our first seven I.O. pins of the EEPROM to the data lines 12 through 18 on the Fuberino chip. Lastly, we need to hook up write enable and output enable. With those hooked up, we should be able to write to this EEPROM. So let's run the code and we'll pop this EEPROM out and put it into the reader we built in the last video. And I'll just go to address 3 and yep, we get 8 out in binary on the LED strip. 
So we successfully programmed one byte into this EEPROM. And in the next video, we'll build a program to program all the A through G values. And we can get one step closer to finishing this converter. So please like this video if you liked it and subscribe to see more like this. My name is Akil Mohudin, and I will catch you guys later.